My name is Bill Real. I work here at Berkeley National Lab, um, and I'm going to talk about the DOE Systems Biology Knowledge Base, which we use um, the Jupyter Notebook as one of the main front ends for, for users to come in and uh, do their analytical work. So at first, what, what is KBase? So KBase is a knowledge creation and discovery environment designed for both biologists and bioinformaticists. So the more comprehensive version of what that means is any, any, biologist or any biologist, anybody who has biological data can come and into the KBase system, upload their data, use our resources to do a number of different uh, analysis pipelines on, on that and check out the results, interpret those results, document the, that interpretation and share all of that including the, the notebook that they would use to do this analysis work and the data itself amongst other users. So the, the short version of kind of the, 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 the pipeline, the, the, the workflow that one would use is a uh, user would start with data about, and, and this being a Department of Energy project and a Berkeley National Lab project joint with a number of other national labs is focused around environmental interactions. So environmental biology, uh, microbial biology, plant biology, and uh, microbial communities. So users can come with that from DUB user facilities or even things that they got, garner from NCBI, um, upload it into our system. And that's not just as simple as throwing data files that they have on their laptops into a web page. So what we mean by data integration at this step is KBase is built around a pretty strong centralized data model. So if somebody comes in with a series of reads that come off of a DNA sequencer, it's not just uploaded as a file, but transformed into a reads object that's stored and that's strongly typed. And the reason for that strong typing, and I'm not really gonna have time to get into this in too much detail, is we really wanna build this as a knowledge base. So a way to react data of different types and that comes from different experiments and from analyses, we, uh, integrate all of that data together and try to build knowledge and try to be able to build predictive biology out of all that. It's a pretty lofty goal and after, after some time of getting, getting the basics down, we're, we're finally making headway towards that, um, but I won't have much time to get into that today. We can chat in the breaks if you like. Um, anyway, once data gets uploaded and integrative, the next step is to do this collaborative analytics, we call, um, where users can come in, use apps and tools that we provide, or even provide their own apps and provide their own tooling to KBA system to do analysis of data. And the way that this is done is through a fairly heavily modified version of the Jupyter Notebook. Um, apps themselves are what we call apps, which would be kind of executing a cell. These get run through a job execution system. We're using HD Condor. Um, all of this, again, all of this together, I just want to reiterate the, the, the data that a user's uploaded and transformed to meet into the data model, as well as the notebook itself and the analysis itself, and even the job status and job documents themselves, get bundled together and become themselves a shareable unit within KBase. So if I upload things and work on them, I can share them with Shane or with Roland or anybody here who can also at the same time perform different analyses, take notes in that, and I'll be alerted to see when those are updated. Um, and we are, we've also recently introduced a way to build up user groups and, and uh, a more broader, not just within the, the notebook, but um, throughout the whole system, a way to manage data and, and work slowly trudging for, as Shane mentioned before, and I know there's other people struggling with the concept, or struggling with the, uh, the practice of um, being a truly fair data shared organization. Um, as mentioned, we have a series of apps that can be run on a gamut of biological data. We have about 200 right now, um, and it's, it's very much not a closed system. KBase is a very open platform, so anybody who has an any app or any external app or anything that they want to be able to use on our resource or integrate with our data model, there's an open SDK and that's available to use. It's really made for the community. Um, a little bit about the, the architecture behind KBase. 
So our user interface, which we call the narrative interface, is built on the Jupyter Notebook, combines the data and the apps and the analysis together. Um, behind all that, the core services, the main data service that might be of interest is sitting on uh, MongoDB and that on top of itself, on top of a blob store where the larger chunks of data like metagenome reads and so on are stored, as well as user and reference data. Interestingly, we, we also store in the notebooks themselves, not just as files in the system, but as units in Mongo. Or, and where do they wind up in the blob store? Might be in the blob store. Um, Next bit is the, the execution engine. So the once a cell is clicked or, or, or a cell is run that contains an app in it, that gets fired off and sent to the execution engine, which runs asynchronously and alerts the notebook when it's finished. So then the notebook will update itself. Um, developer interface, I also won't touch on too much, but we do have a set of SDK tools for adding your own apps to the system. And just, it's, pretty open and free to use, so you could just plug it right into the app catalog, and then it'll become available for anybody who would want to use your app. Um, and I'll do a brief demo here. I think some of the concepts make more sense to really see it in action. So I have one up right now. This is just a tutorial I have on the JGI's metagenome assembly pipeline that we have wrapped up as a single app in KBase. Um, and there's, this is a Jupyter Notebook. It's pretty heavily modified. We have a different set of templates that work on the front end that give us things like this data panel here. So this is the set of data objects that are associated with this, this narrative. Um, there's, and each one of these is itself, tell you what its data type is. This one's an RNA-seq alignment, a paired end library of reads. Um, opening it up will give you some options and tell you quite a bit about the metadata. You can also drag and drop on here, which I won't do right now because I don't want to beat up the network, but um, that, will also, that will just automatically create this cell. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll gamble. Let's gamble. This will, create, this will pop a cell in place that once this loads up, it will show you a little bit about what that data object is and give you some details. And I just want to emphasize a little bit, we're not making up any new cell types here. These are, this is a standard Jupyter notebook. It just has a different interface on top of it. So even though this looks a little bit different, it is really just a different code cell that gets executed and shows the, the result below, which is, in this case, is a JavaScript widget. Oops. Um, scrolling down a little bit, when the user gets to the point that they would want to run an app. Here's what we call an app cell, which again, is just another code cell. And this just gives a different interface really for a user to create code. So if there's a power user, like probably everybody in this room, um, you can just enter code directly and execute it. But a number of our external users that are pure biologists or pure bench biologists or experimental biologists, aren't necessarily interested in writing the code themselves, but so we also provide an interface that this cell becomes very well aware of what data is available in this narrative. So you can kind of pick and choose what, what I want to run on for my inputs, decide what the output should be, and then just hit run, that'll execute. Um, and as the cooking show style, this would be the result of that. So there's two other things that become active here. So the job status gives you some clues to what, what the job is doing itself. So this is really just the raw log that comes off of the, the execution server. And the final result of that job would show up in another tab here. In this case, this is a, a report on what happened after running the, the metagenome assembly. And finally, these, these objects that were, these new data objects that were created don't just live in the narrative itself or don't just live in the notebook, but become serialized and live in the K-based data system and become available and pop up over here. So that's the short version of that. Um, finally, so what's next for us is, that was all living on the Jupyter notebook right now. Um, and actually a little bit of an older version of that as well. 
but we're all pretty excited about Jupiter Lab, especially coming out 1.0 very soon. Congratulations, guys. Um, so one project that we have in mind is we want to adapt what are currently a series of NB extensions into a series of Jupyter Lab extensions. We started that work, and um, some of it will be challenging. So I might be bugging some of the Jupyter folks that are here today. Um, we're also using we're also transitioning over to using Jupyter Hub for container management for for notebooks, um, for various other things. Right now we have a custom. Yeah, we have we have a custom system right now that that spawns notebooks. If every notebook or narrative, I should probably stick with the byline narrative that you see in the narrative interface is a um, Docker container that's running in, for each individual user. And we'll be transitioning that over to be using a Jupyter Lab or to Hub. I keep tripping over those. And finally, the next thing that we want to do is just more focus on running jobs in batch. And so connecting using Jupyter and using a lot of the tools that have been brought up today already to connect job running with the HPC access we have here at NERSC and um, apps that we have that are in the pipeline that are, that are really designed to work on larger clusters rather than on just a couple of nodes, which is the majority of the apps that we have. So um, that's the brief introduction to KBase. Um, any questions? Yeah, I was, when you switch to Jupyter Lab, I mean, you're, the, the narrative interface and all of that is very customized and very mm -hmm. highly branded. Yeah. And what are you going to do with Jupyter Lab? Is it like kind of shaping or? Partly, I, I think it will be, well, there, there's a few things we've talked about. So one is, one of the great things about Jupyter Lab, I think, is that everything is built in as an extension. So we can really build a flavor of Jupyter Lab that'll look more or less like what the narrative looks like now. Um, ever, I mean, we already have some progress done on, actually, I think I have that open, my little hack together version. So this is, we already have an extension that has, here's the list of apps that we have. Here's the set of data that's available in a given notebook. Notebooks aren't really reskinned yet. Um, we have the um, uh, uh, the file browser links to our data store and all that. Okay. So it, it's already kind of on the way towards looking like that. What is different, you're right, is a lot of the other branding components. But um, I th my feeling is that Jupyter Labs is extensible enough that that will be quite a bit of work, but I think mostly will be doable. And we'll also this is also an opportunity for us to update what our look and feel should be. And we've learned a lot of lessons in the past few years of what works and what really doesn't. And conversely, I would say we're super interested in the, the needs that KBase is a mm -hmm. complex and sophisticated enough use case, but that's pushing exactly kind of the, the design brief of Jupyter Lab, which was mm -hmm. to be an extensible user interface for complex scientific workflows of yeah. this kind. So, Whatever doesn't work, great. <laughs> it'll, it'll, be, it'll be good. It'll be good design. Good design exercise. I, I yeah. So if you have a second, you might want to type. Can you type into Google right now? Sure. Uh, fly Brain Lab. One word. Fly as a group. Lab. Fly, fly Brain Lab. lab. One word. And just hit that first name. So this is something that I saw just a few oh. weeks ago. I was visiting Colombia. And if you scroll down, there's a couple of what seem like static images, but they're short videos. Uh, this thing is, let's see if this one opens in. This one's a little YouTube. It's three it's minutes. Yeah, it's not the main thing. Let's skip ahead a bit. This is a highly customized oh, well, look at that. interface where they build connectors to genomics databases for, for, for mm -hmm. fruit flies, mm -hmm. um, computational modeling, 3D this. And it's all actually built as a set of custom, heavily customized, uh, but really well done with a lot of extensions. And so the whole thing in the end is it took a lock shell. Uh, it's really, really lovely. It's lovely. That's very cool. And it is, it's all open source. It's from a, from a, from a double lab um, at, uh, at Columbia. So probably talking to this place. Yeah. Just wanted to put it on your radar. Yeah, thank you. In, this, in the I'll spirit check that out. of uh, what it is. Yeah, yeah. So 
on, on KBase or maybe also on that other project, and how many people are actually involved in the um, adaptation of Jupiter? That are actually working on it right now? Yeah. About one and a half of us okay. at the moment. It's, yeah. it, this is pretty early stage. We've got like the lion's share of it, which is still standing up on the stage right there. Um, yeah. But there's a few others that are trying to help, but he's definitely the rest of it. I was curious, I mean, are any other groups doing these kind of deep, you know, Jupiter Lab extension kind of efforts? That might be another. We've got I think that'd be another fun breakout. Jason, we should start tracking like I know. these. That's These the biggest more, thing I'm seeing is that well, there's a lot more lurkers and people in the community using this than we had any clue of. Well, and this what, I, what I would argue is we should start tracking what I would call sort of deeper customizations, yeah. not just one-off extensions, but where somebody is effectively a building a platform, a custom platform like that. Yeah. Fruit Fly Brain Lab eventually came mm -hmm. in. We should put a section in the docs that show and tell whatever, like, here's what people are doing. With your Good way to start that. Yes. Yeah. I suggest because we're doing fast and we're just you know, we are learning on this. But I think what is really nice for my trade, we should have some conventions somewhere on how you do an extension and how you expose your objects back to order. Because yeah, that'd be great. We're going to do a custom extension and great, but it'd be really cool if you have them talk to each other. Like yeah. you have this something to open, and, you know, and I really think that how just a few times you said like, this is how you expose object, and I really think you're right. We could do it like kernel independent, but right now we do all of them. Mm -hmm. But really, it's just a fine brother that just you know inject two lines of code that tells you open and put it. But it would be easy enough for them to say like, "Are so you doing Python? Are so you doing R?" And this is and it's using Orcus and Python right now. But you could override that for another user because I don't have to work with Python, but I have another Python predator. So you just have to use this way to inject code and you give it my same code for time and so you do only Python use. All this thing I've got it, what we like is convention. Mm -hmm. And it's a good time to do these things now because we're all going to start to go one step one all the way and then it won't be fine. Jay's question we put like on the potential breakouts to begin capturing some of that. Yeah. There was one that. that'll be great. Like, you, know. you could just co op that and yeah. write a thread off it. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for letting me cut in line.